Hi, everyone. Welcome to lesson 28. So this lesson, we will see a lot of vocabulary, as you can already see on this first slide. Um, we'll get an introduction to polynomials, different ways of describing and arranging polynomials. And then we'll also get into adding and subtracting them. Um, in later lessons, we'll also talk about multiplying and dividing. All right, so let's kind of go in order here. Um, our first definition is monomial. So a monomial is a constant or number um, or a constant times some variables raised to powers that are non-negative integers. In other words, a monomial, think of mono as one. It's one single term. It can be a, just a number like 12. Um, it can be a number with a variable like 5x. And there can be exponents as long as they are essentially positive whole numbers. Um, so for example, 6w squared y, that is an example of a monomial. It's all one term. The 6 is called a constant. w squared and y are each variables. Um, and they may or may not have exponents on them. So that's a monomial. Um, some terms that are not listed here are binomial and trinomial. We will see those a little bit later. Bi means two, tri means three. Um, so if you take two monomials and add or subtract them, that can be a binomial. If you take three of them, that can be a trinomial, etc. Then we get to the next term here, which is polynomial. Poly means many. Um, so there's many terms. This is kind of a generic word that sort of encompasses all different types, whether there's one or more <laughs> terms. So a polynomial is a monomial or a combination of a sum or difference of monomials. For example, this is a trinomial here, x squared plus 2x plus 5, that's three terms. Here's a binomial with two terms, w squared z to the fourth minus 6y. That's a binomial with two terms. And then 13, is of course just a monomial. Those are all different types of polynomials. All right, and then when we break them down and talk about different parts of polynomials, we get to some more vocabulary. So the next word is coefficient. The coefficient of a monomial term is just the constant or just the number. So for example, the coefficient of four x squared y is four four is the coefficient. Sometimes I will say the number in the front. <laughs> um, the number in the front is four. That's the coefficient. The degree of a monomial term is the sum of the exponents on variables. Okay, so you basically add up the exponents on a single term. So for example, the degree of 4x squared y is three because we add the exponent of two on the x with the exponent of one from the y, we add those together to get three. So just keep in mind, there is a one exponent on a variable, even if you don't see it. Now, compare that to this next example, the degree of four is zero. So if there's no variables, there's no exponents to add, the degree of any constant term, just any constant number is just zeros. There's just zero, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Let's see, our next vocabulary, the leading term of a polynomial. So leading, think of that as being in the front, right? The first one, um, the leading term of a polynomial is the term with the highest degree. So that may or may not actually appear first, but we'll talk about rearranging things in order. We tend to like things in descending order with the highest degree first. So if you compare the degrees of all the terms, the leading term is the one with the highest degree. Remember degree has to do with adding those exponents. Okay, it's coefficient is the leading coefficient. All right, and we'll see examples of all of these very soon. And finally, the degree of a polynomial is the degree of its leading term. Alrighty, so that's a lot of words. Um, and on the next slide, we're gonna actually apply this and answer some questions. And I think the more examples you see, the more it will make sense. All right, let's look at some examples of polynomials. And um, I took these examples from your homework. So you'll see some homework problems where there's many parts, part A, part B, et cetera. And these are some of the things you'll be asked to do. So this first, well, I guess the first column, there's different, um, different vocabulary words listed here, and we'll be sort of filling in the blanks. The second column, that'll be sort of our first, our first go around, our first example with all these different parts. Then the third column, we'll, we'll do it all again. So let's, let's look first at this polynomial, negative two x to the eighth minus nine x to the fifth plus five x minus three. 
So our first job is to list the terms. This part, it's pretty much just copying down what you see here, only we're putting commas in between them. So negative two X to the eighth, that's our first term, comma. Our second term is negative nine X to the fifth, comma. Our third term, you can see the plus five X, but we don't need to write the plus sign. We just assume it's positive if we don't write it. So we just write five X, comma, and then minus three. So notice if there's a negative or minus sign, we definitely need to list that. If there's just a plus sign when we're listing the terms, you don't need to write that. Okay, and now the next few questions, we're gonna figure out the degree of each term in order. So remember the degree is either the exponent on the variable, or if you have more than one variable, you would add the exponents together. Okay, so our, the degree of our first term, remember the first term that was negative two X to the eighth, the degree is just that exponent of eight. All right, degree of the second term. The second term is this negative nine X to the fifth. The degree is the exponent of five. And now onto the third term. The third term is five X. We don't see an exponent on the X, but it's there. The degree is one. Because remember, if you see a variable with no exponent, really there's an exponent of one. So it's really like five X to the one. Finally, the degree of the fourth term, this negative three, there is no variable. So keep in mind, it's kind of like three, or excuse me, negative three X to the zero. If you wanna imagine a variable, it would have an exponent of zero. X to the zero is equal to one, negative three times one is still negative three. So that's really what's going on there. And the point is the degree is zero. Okay, so notice the degree of five X, that was one, and the degree of that constant number negative three, the degree there is just zero. Okay, now let's compare all those numbers together, eight, five, one, and zero. We need to pay attention to which one is the highest degree. The highest of those numbers is eight. So the degree of the polynomial is also eight. So notice how we're comparing the degrees of all the terms and we're taking the highest one. So the degree of the polynomial is eight. Notice that we're not adding them right now. Okay, so we would only do that if there's variables that are together in the same term and that does not happen. Um, that does not happen in this problem. All right, next question, the leading term. Okay, so notice how these terms are in order from highest degree to lowest. Um, the one with the highest degree happens to be written first, but even if it wasn't written first, it would still be called the leading term. So that's this negative two X to the eighth. That's the leading term. Okay, so let's focus on that leading term. The coefficient, the number in the front right here is negative two. So the leading coefficient is negative two. And then finally, the constant term um, that's the term that doesn't have a variable, which often is written last. So in this case, it's negative three. So our constant term, just a number, no variable, negative three. Okay, so hopefully you're kind of getting a sense of these different vocabulary words and what we're referring to. This is really a way of paying attention to all these little details um, about polynomials. Let's move on to another example. This is the third column in our little chart here. This one also happens to have four terms, r to the seventh plus three r to the 22 plus d to the 10th r to the fifth minus six. So let's go through the same steps again. This time we'll list the terms and we'll put a comma in between each one, r to the seventh comma, three r to the 22 comma, d to the 10th, r to the fifth, that's all one term, comma, and then minus six. Just a little note, notice that these terms are not in order from highest degree to lowest. Just notice that, that's okay for now, but we just need to pay attention. But for now, we're gonna answer these in order based on how they were given to us. So the first term is r to the seventh. The degree of that first term is seven. The second term, three r to the 22, the degree is 22. The third term, okay, here it is, the third term, d to the 10th, r to the fifth. That's all one term. There happens to be two variables. So the degree is 15 because we needed to add 10 plus five. So that's the only time on here so far that we've actually added the exponents when they appear together in the same term. 
So the degree of that third term is 15 because we added 10 plus 5. The fourth term is a constant, just like last time. It's this minus 6. The degree is 0. So if we compare those four degrees, 7, 22, 15, and 0, the highest one is 22. So that means the degree of the polynomial is also 22. Because again, that's the highest degree of the, of the terms in the polynomial. Which means <laughs> these next few questions, or the next two questions, have to do with the term that has that highest degree. So the leading term is the one with the 22. That's 3r to the 22. Even though it wasn't written first, it doesn't look like it's leading, it, technically we do call it the leading term. And if we did rearrange these terms, we'd have to put it first because it has the highest exponent. Okay, and then the leading coefficient, that's the number in the front of that term, which is the three right there. And then finally, the constant term is the one with no variable, that's the negative six. Okay, so lots of vocabulary to get used to here. The first couple of questions on your homework will go through all of these, all of these concepts again, and you'll have to answer all these details about polynomials there as well. Okay. I've already mentioned this a little bit, um, descending order. So we generally arrange polynomials in one variable so that the exponents decrease from left to right or go down from left to right. This is called descending order. So to descend is to go down. All right, so here's some examples. Write the polynomials in descending powers of x. All right, so number one, uh, negative two x to the eighth minus x to the fifth plus 5x minus 3. This is actually already in descending order. Notice that the first term has a degree of 8, then the next one has a degree of 5, then 1, and then 0. Okay, so I'll just make a note of those degrees right here. So 8, 5, 1, 0. Okay, so highest to lowest. So it's already in descending order. We don't need to rewrite that one for number 1. Let's take a look at number 2. This one is not in descending order. So let's look at the, the degrees here. I'll just make a note right above. 16, that first term is a constant term. The degree is 0. So it's going to have to go last. OK, and then negative 6x to the 8, the degree is 8 there, plus 6x. Remember, there's a 1 there. So that degree is 1. And then minus 5x to the 6, the degree is 6. So let's rearrange from highest to lowest. So the highest. That's the one with the eight. So we'll write that first. We need to keep that minus sign with it. So we'll write minus six X to the eighth. Okay, then the next highest is the one with the six. So that's minus five X to the sixth. Then the next highest is the one with the one here plus six X. And then finally the constant term 16, since it's positive, we'll write plus 16. So again, highest to lowest exponent. Okay, now number three, a little bit different. Notice that the directions didn't just say descending order, but the directions said descending powers of x. So in number three, there's more than one variable. There's x and y. We really need to just focus on the x when we're doing this. So the degree or the power of the x, let's just write that for now. So this is five for the first one, because it's x to the fifth, y to the fifth. But we're again, we're just focusing on x, because that's what the directions asked us to do, powers of x. The next one, x to the sixth, y. The degree on the x is just 6. Then minus x, y to the sixth. The degree on the x is 1. And then plus 28, the degree there is 0. So it looks like we just need to switch those first two terms so that the one with the, the six power goes first. And then the one with the fifth power, then the degree of one, and then zero. So let's do that. X to the sixth y, that's going to be first. Then plus x to the fifth y to the fifth. Okay, and then minus x y to the sixth, and then plus 28. So again, this is in descending powers of x. All right, if it was about powers of y, it would be a different answer. We'd have to focus on those instead. All right, now I don't think I included it in the notes here, but sometimes you might be asked for ascending order instead of descending. I'll just make a note right here at the bottom. Ascending instead of descending. 
much less common, but I did see a couple of homework questions asking about this. It's just the opposite. So you would just, instead of high to low, you would do low to high in terms of your order. So for example, you know, if you had 2x squared uh, plus x to the seventh, that's ascending order because you have the lower exponent before the higher exponent. So it's ascent to ascend is to go up rather than to go down. Usually we'll ask you to write your answer in descending order, highest to lowest. But if you see the word ascending, it's just asking for the opposite. All right. Now we're going to get into kind of our second big part of this lesson, which is on adding and subtracting polynomials. Now you've actually done this before um, in the previous class. Uh, intermediate algebra part one did cover adding and subtracting. You didn't see as many exponents, but you did collect like terms or combine like terms. So that phrase might sound familiar. So just a reminder, like terms, that just means they're terms that are alike. They're similar to each other. And what makes them similar is they have the same variables. And if there's exponents, those exponents also need to be the same. So like terms have the same variables raised to the same exponents. So for example, 2x squared and 7x squared would be like terms because they both have the x squareds. To combine or collect like terms, what you do is add or subtract the coefficients. Remember, those are the numbers in front of the variables and keep the variables the same. Okay, so don't change the exponents, don't change the variables, you're just changing the coefficients. So let's do an example. Number one, add the polynomials by combining like terms. So three x to the fourth plus x to the third minus four x squared plus six x plus seven, that's all in parentheses, that's one polynomial, plus four x to the fourth minus three x to the third plus two x minus one. That's a lot to keep track of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add using columns. In other words, I'm going to line up the like terms. So I'm gonna keep my first expression in parentheses as it is, and then take the second one, rewrite those terms, lining them up with the like terms in the, in the other expression. So matching them essentially. Remember like terms need to have the same variable and the same exponent. So we'll take this 4x to the fourth and add it with 3x to the fourth. And that will become 7x to the fourth. 3 plus 4 is 7. Keep the variable the same. Keep that x to the fourth the same all the way through. All right, so I did that one. Next one, minus 3x to the third. We'll put that with the plus x to the third. When we combine those, this is pretty much like a plus one x to the third. So positive one minus three, that's negative two. So I'll write minus two x to the third. Okay, now I have this plus two x. I need to be careful because that does not line up with the minus four x squared. In fact, that minus four x squared, we pretty much just need to bring it down um, and copy it down in our final answer. There's no other x squared term that will be combined with it. Um, so with the plus 2x, that will be combined with the plus 6x. Those are like terms. So positive 6x plus 2x, that will become plus 8x. All right, and then we're almost done. What's left is this minus 1. We'll write that right under the constant of plus 7. Positive 7 minus 1 is positive 6. So we'll write plus 6 for our last term. And notice that our answer is in descending order. That wasn't part of the directions necessarily, but it's very common for that to sort of naturally happen um, based on how the original problem is set up. So our final answer, 7x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus 4x squared plus 8x plus 6. Okay, let's try another one. Number two, you can see there's three different sets of parentheses. Each one has two terms in it. Um, and so let's pay attention to those terms, pay attention to those variables and exponents, and we'll combine the ones that are alike. We can attempt to do this one using columns, although it sort of seems like that might be a little trickier to do. So I might take a slightly different approach. All right, here's the first expression in parentheses, 14v squared d minus 5vd squared. All right, 
and then plus, next parentheses, 2VD minus 9V squared D, close parentheses, and then plus, here's the last expression, negative 4VD squared plus 7VD. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to sort of underline or highlight the, the like terms here. All right, and I know there's parentheses. The thing is, though, we don't really need to keep those. Um, there's sort of three groups of two terms each, but that there's really just six terms that we're going to be combining. Okay, so you can pretty much let the parentheses go. We'll sometimes need to pay closer attention to parentheses when we're subtracting because we'll need to distribute a negative sign first, which essentially means adding the opposite. But for now, we'll keep them as they are. So let's go in order here. Let's start with 14v squared d. I'm going to just kind of circle this or write a little box around it. What other terms do we see that are alike with this one that have the same variables with the same exponents? And it has to be v squared d. Okay, the next one I see is this minus 9v squared d. And I do need to keep that minus sign. And I think that's it. Okay, so 14 minus 9 would be 5. And I'll keep the variables. So 5v squared d. That will be the first term in my final answer. All right, let's do something similar for the next one. Minus 5vd squared. So I'm just using a different color so I can keep track. Minus 5vd squared. Let's look for another term that has vd squared, which is this minus 4vd squared. Negative 5 minus 4 would be negative 9. So I'll write minus 9vd squared. OK, and let's see what we have left. We have this positive 2vd, and then we have plus 7vd. 2 plus 7 is 9, so I'll write plus 9vd. So we end up with three terms in our final answer. We can't combine them anymore because these three are not like terms with each other. They all have different combinations of variables and exponents. So our final answer, 5v squared d minus 9vd squared plus 9vd. You could write these terms in a different order if you choose to do that, that's fine. Um, but make sure that these are the three that you have, okay? So that you have a positive 5v squared d you have a minus 9vd squared, you have a positive 9vd. They can be in a different order, um, but just be careful with your signs if you choose to switch the order. All right, so those are some examples of adding polynomials. We combined like terms and notice that we added or subtracted the coefficients, but we did not change the exponents. I've seen that as a mistake that students make sometimes. So for example, 3x to the fourth plus 4x to the fourth, we didn't suddenly get x to the eighth. <laughs> we kept the x to the fourth all the way through. All right, the next examples um, will involve subtraction. So this will be, feel very similar. Um, the directions say this, to subtract polynomials, add the opposite of the second polynomial. In other words, distribute negative one, remove parentheses, then combine like terms. Okay, so this kind of goes back to when we first learned about negative numbers. Um, here's, here's what we mean. So for example, if you have six minus two, we could write that as six plus negative two. Those are the same. You, you wouldn't necessarily do that. Either way, you're gonna get four for an answer. <laughs> um, but the idea is subtracting is the same thing as adding the opposite. Okay, so what we're going to do in our problem, because we're not just subtracting two, we're subtracting this whole polynomial, we're gonna take that minus sign and distribute it as a negative one, essentially changing the signs of each term in that second polynomial, okay, and then rewriting them. All right, so once we do that, it will just turn right back into an addition problem. Okay, so this will turn into minus, let's see, negative one times eight is minus eight CT squared. And then negative times negative becomes plus four CT. Negative times negative becomes plus 16 C squared T. 
Okay, so I've just rewritten the second expression as the opposite. So I'm about to get ready to combine like terms of this new opposite expression with the original. So the original expression, the first one is 10 CT minus 6T squared, or excuse me, I'm sorry, let me start over. 10 CT minus 6C squared T plus 16CT squared. Okay, that all stayed the same. And then we were subtracting something in parentheses, but what I've done is just distributed a negative one, changed the signs and rewritten those terms. Now it's just like the problem we did previously where now we combine like terms. Feel free to line them up in columns if you want to, or you can underline them, highlight them, whatever you need to do. Okay, so let's see, 4CT, I'm gonna do the underlining or circling thing again. Maybe I'll underline this time. Um, 10 CT and then 4 CT. I'm noticing those as like terms. 10 plus 4 is 14. So I'll write 14 CT for my first term. And then the next term that I'm seeing here is minus 6 C squared T. And where else do we see a C squared T? All the way at the end here. So minus 6 C squared T and then plus 16 c squared t. Negative 6 plus 16 is positive 10, so plus 10 c squared t. All right, and that leaves these last two terms that I haven't underlined yet. They're together in the middle. Positive 16 c t squared minus 8 c t squared. That becomes, let's see, positive 8 c t squared. So our final answer is 14 CT plus 10 C squared T plus 8 CT squared. All right. Last example in our notes for now, I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> one last one. Um, this is actually similar to the last problem on your homework. We'll do this one. You can see there's fractions involved. Then we'll pause. And there's just a couple of tips I want to give you for homework number 28 before we finish up. All right, so here's another subtraction problem. This one happens to involve fractions. So 3 sevenths x to the fourth minus 1 twelfth x squared minus 1 half. That's all in parentheses. Minus, then my next parentheses, negative 4 seventh x to the fourth plus 1 fourth x squared plus 1 half. Okay, so just like the last problem, we're going to start by distributing a negative one and changing the signs when we rewrite that second expression. In other words, we're about to add, excuse me, <laughs> sorry here. Okay, add the opposite. Ah, shoot, sorry. It's, I'm having a little technical difficulty here. Try one more time, add the opposite. That's all I wanted to write. Alrighty, so um, I think I'm going to, as I rewrite these, I am gonna rewrite them underneath the other terms. Um, so negative one times negative four sevenths, that becomes plus four sevenths, and that's gonna be plus four sevenths x to the fourth. I'm gonna write that right under the 3 sevenths x to the fourth. Because those x to the fourths are like terms. Okay, next, negative one times one fourth, that's gonna be minus one fourth x squared. And I'm writing that right underneath the minus one twelfth x squared. And then finally, negative one times one half, that's gonna be minus one half, which happens to line up with this other minus one half. Okay, so we have some work to do with fractions. So let's figure out what we need. Let's see, to add and subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. And for some of these, we actually have that already. So for the first terms, 3 sevenths plus 4 sevenths, that's 7 sevenths, x to the fourth. But of course, 7 sevenths reduces to 1. So this is really 1 x to the fourth, or we can just write x to the fourth for that first term. So that's good. Now let's work on these middle terms. Negative 1 12th x squared minus 1 4th x squared. We're gonna need to combine these fractions, negative 1 12th minus 1 4th. 
we need a common denominator to add or subtract. Our common denominator is 12 because four already goes into 12. So let's multiply four times three and then one times three. So we're getting, let's see, negative one twelfth, and then the minus one fourth has changed to minus three twelfths. So negative one twelfth minus three twelfths. Negative one minus three is negative four. So that's negative four twelfths. And finally, let's reduce by dividing by four. So let's see, four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three. So I'm getting negative one third. Um, and then remember, this was all dealing with this middle term where um, those middle terms both had x squared. So we can write minus one third x squared. Okay, so maybe we'll write, let's see, minus four twelfths x squared, then reduce. All right, so here we go. So we're filling in our final answer. So far we have x to the fourth minus one third x squared. And off to the side, we did all that, did all that work combining those fractions. Negative one twelfth minus one fourth became negative one twelfth minus three twelfths, which is negative four twelfths. Then we reduce to minus one third. And finally, the last terms, negative one half minus one half. Okay, we already have common denominators there. So we keep that common denominator of two, negative one minus one is negative two. So we're getting negative two over two, which is negative one. So I'm writing minus one. Be careful, you might have thought those would cancel out to nothing or zero, but it's negative and negative adding to negative. So be careful there. Negative one half minus one half becomes negative two halves, which is negative one. So here's our final answer. We have x to the fourth minus one third x squared minus one. Okay, so you've now seen hopefully enough to get you going on uh, homework 28 where you're dealing with polynomials as well as adding and subtracting. So feel free to pause the video here and go try some problems. I'm also gonna pause and when I, um, when I return momentarily, I'll go through just a couple of the problems from homework 28 that might be just slightly different from what we just saw in our notes here. All right, so here we are looking at homework 28. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a preview here. Now I'm in, I have a special instructor preview mode. So I just got to check this box that says show completed problem. You don't have that option, but I'm using it just to save a little time for this first one. So number one, um, this is similar to how we filled in that chart or filled in that table um, about degree and terms and all that. So here's number one, my version is negative three R to the six minus seven R to the third plus four R squared plus three R minus nine. The first question is list the terms. So notice in this kind of blue gray box here, it's all those terms listed with commas in between. And then after that, we're asked to fill in the degree. The degree of the first term is six. The degree of the second term is three. The degree of the third term is two from that four R squared. The degree of the fourth term is one from that three R with the one on it that you can't see. The degree of the fifth term is zero. That's that constant term of negative nine. The degree of the polynomial is six. Now, sometimes people mess up here and add all these exponents, but remember you only add if the exponents are together in the same term. So after you list all those degrees separately, six, three, two, one, zero, ask yourself which is highest and the answer is six. So therefore the degree of the polynomial is six. It never has a term that has a degree higher than six. Okay, and then the leading term is that negative three R to the six. The leading coefficient is that negative three. And then the constant term is the last one with no variable, negative nine. Okay, so that's number one. Um, oh, and it just reshuffled for me. <laughs> number two is similar. Notice for number two, it has this third term with p to the ninth, w to the fourth. So just keep in mind when you list the degree of that term, you'd have to add the exponents and get 13. Um, let's see, I'm gonna skip ahead. Here's number three, another similar question like this, only with more variables. Here, let's show the completed problem for that one. <laughs> okay, oh boy, it looks so intimidating when you <laughs> see all those exponents. Um, so it's four W to the eighth plus nine W to the ninth P to the fifth plus four W to the fourth P to the fourth plus five W to the fourth minus five. 
Oh boy, okay. So we list all the terms with commas in between, state the degrees of each term. Notice that second term, nine W to the ninth P to the fifth. That's where we have to add the exponents. Nine plus five is 14. Um, same thing with the third term here, W to the fourth P to the fourth. Four plus four is eight. So that's where that's coming from. Okay, and then when you get to the degree of the polynomial, which is the highest of all these terms. So the degrees of the terms are eight, 14, eight, four, and zero. So it looks like the 14 would be the highest. We got that from doing nine plus five. So therefore the degree of the polynomial is also the highest, which is 14. All right, the leading term that, we, that gave us that degree, that's the nine W to the ninth P to the fifth. Leading coefficient is nine. And then the constant term at the end with no variable is negative five. All right, then we get into descending order or arranging the terms in descending order. So this is number four, arrange the terms in of the polynomial in descending powers of R. So notice how, how they've been rearranged. That's kind of a similar one um, to what we saw in the notes. Let me get to a slightly harder one. Okay, so here's number five. Arrange the terms of the polynomial in descending powers of D. Okay, so this one has R and D <laughs> both. So we need to just pay attention to D, which is what's asked for in the directions. So it looks like R squared D squared and then R to the third D minus R D to the third plus two. So the highest power of D is that minus R D to the third that three exponent is the highest. So I'm gonna write that first, negative R D to the third then the next highest power of D would be that D squared. So I'm gonna write plus R squared D squared. Okay, and then we need this term that has just a one exponent on the D. So that's plus R to the third D and then the plus two at the end. Okay, so that's another example of descending order. That was descending powers of D. Another one with descending powers of F here. Okay. And now we're getting into ascending. So if you're not careful reading the words, you might've just gotten into the habit of doing descending and might get frustrated getting it wrong. So number seven will ask you for ascending, um, increasing powers of V in this case. So ascending means going up, it's gonna be low to high. All right, so I'm gonna make a note of that. <laughs> so ascending means going up low to high. Okay, so 30V plus five plus two V to the fifth minus three V to the third. So the lowest degree there is actually that constant term of five that has a degree of zero. So five would go first. Then the next one has a degree of one that would be this plus 30V. Then the degree of three looks like that's next minus three V to the third. And then finally the highest one plus two V to the fifth. Okay, so just be careful there. Again, descending is mostly what we wanna focus on, but sometimes you'll be asked for ascending or ascending going from low to high. And that's, that comes up on number seven, as well as number eight, actually. <laughs> um, this one is ascending powers of S here. Let's just show the completed problem. Oh, and it changed it. <laughs> All right, so here's an example of a completed problem. This is number eight. Um, my, my original one was had a bunch of R's and T's. So, and it says, arrange the terms in ascending powers of R. So low to high powers of R. Looks like the first term with the lowest degree of R is this seven R T to the fourth. That's first plus looks like the next highest power of R is this R to the fourth. So R to the fourth T to the fifth. You don't need to type that little dot in between. That's not necessary. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's there, but it's fine. And then the next highest power minus 29 R to the fifth T. And then the highest power of R goes last. That's plus four R to the seventh. All right, so that was number eight. Seven and eight both ask about ascending and so does number nine. <laughs> All right, and then we get to collecting like terms. I think we're pretty good with this. Um, I'm just gonna sort of skip ahead to um, a different category of questions that ask you about opposites. So I'm skipping way ahead. You'll see collect like terms or combine like terms, then you'll see add. 
which is essentially saying the same thing. Okay, eventually it's gonna ask us to subtract, but first, okay, first, oh yeah. First we see some decimals and fractions. We have a little multiple choice question here and then here we go. Okay, number 24 is gonna ask about expressions for the opposite of the polynomial. Let's go back and do number 23. That might've looked a little tricky. Okay, here's number 23, add the polynomials. Four sevenths VT plus four, or sorry, four elevenths VT, wow. <laughs> plus four elevenths VT squared plus 1.3 V squared T and then plus negative six elevenths VT plus three, three elevenths VT squared minus 0.9 V squared T. Okay, so there's fractions and decimals, but hopefully you can see the fractions already have common denominators of 11, so that's nice. And then, you know, you can just add or subtract the decimals. Let's combine like terms here, and then we'll choose our correct choice. So my first term, 4 elevenths VT, I'm gonna combine that with negative 6 elevenths VT. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So I'm looking for a negative 2 elevenths. VT for my first term. Okay, which already eliminates choice A that has 10 11. So we'll get rid of that. Okay, let's go to the next terms. Positive 4 11 VT squared. And then I think that's a plus 3 11 VT squared. 4 11 plus 3 11, that would be plus 7 11 VT squared. And all the choices have that. <laughs> um, oh, interesting. Yeah, they all have. Wait, now I'm confused. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. They, see, multiple choice is not always easier. Okay, choice B, I didn't even notice this until this very moment. Choice B has negative two 11s, but it just has a V instead of a VT. So pay attention to that. So we're just down to choice C or D. They both have the same two first terms. It's just a matter of the last terms, the decimals. Okay, so plus 1.3 V squared T, and then I need to erase there, minus, 0.9 V squared T. So 1.3 minus 0.9 is going to be 0.4 <laughs> positive. So that's going to be my choice C here. So just be careful there. Pay attention <laughs> to those choices that look really similar. Yours might not be choice C, but it will be a similar type of question. Alrighty. So let's look at number 24 and make sure we can understand what's being asked here because I did not show you this in the notes. Write two equivalent expressions for the opposite of the polynomial. Okay, remember when we were adding the opposite? I'm waiting for you to say yes, okay. <laughs> um, the opposite, we added the opposite when we were subtracting. So the opposite of a number is just changing the sign. So the opposite of five is negative five. The opposite of a polynomial, you're just gonna put a negative on the outside of parentheses first. So here's one expression. Um, the original expression is four V to the third minus seven V squared plus six V minus eight. So the first way we can write the opposite of that is literally just writing a minus sign, then parentheses, and then just typing the whole thing. Okay, so negative parentheses and then copy the exact same expression. Okay, now the directions are asking us for two expressions. Now that's one of them. I'm gonna separate them with a comma. It says type two different expressions separated by a comma. So comma, and then what did we do to add the opposite? Well, remember how we distributed that negative sign? <laughs> that's what we're gonna do next. Changing the signs of those terms and that's our next expression. So after the comma, I'm now going to rewrite it with all the signs changed and no parentheses. So next I'm gonna write negative four V to the third and then change the negative to plus seven V squared. And then instead of plus write minus six V and then instead of minus eight write plus eight. So it's kind of a strange question, a little bit confusing the first time. You might not understand what they're asking, but that's why I'm showing you now. So those are the two expressions we're looking for. One with parentheses and then one with the signs changed. That comes up with number 24. Here's number 25, similar problem. I'll just click show completed problem so you can see a similar one. Two, such, 
two such expressions. Okay, so the first expression has a negative sign in front of parentheses, and then the second expression, notice how all the signs have been changed. All right, that's number 24 and 25. And then we get to 26 to the end. Now we get to subtraction of polynomials. Okay, and we definitely saw this in our notes. This is where you add the opposite, distribute that negative one to change all the signs and then combine like terms. Okay. And I'm skipping ahead. Here it is. Okay, so number 32 involves some decimals and number three is fractions like we saw in the notes. So let's end with number 32. We're subtracting and then it does say to arrange the terms of the answer in descending powers of v. Okay, so here's my problem. 3.29 v to the fourth minus 0 0.044 v to the third plus 2.29. That's my original expression. I just rewrote it. Minus, now when I rewrite this second expression, I'm going to add the opposite. So I'm, I just drew some arrows. I'm about to distribute that negative one to change the sign. So minus 1.00 v to the fourth. I'm lining that up with the other v to the fourth. Negative times negative is now plus 0 0.100 v to the third. And then be careful over here, we have this uh, we're going to have this minus 0 0.58 v squared, but there's nothing to line that up with. So I'll just write it off by itself. Because this plus 2.29, that's a constant term that doesn't have a variable. So we're going to need to do just a little rearranging. All right, I am pulling my calculator out right now just to make this slightly easier, although we should be able to do it without. <laughs> um, we're just going to use our calculator to add or subtract the decimals. Okay, so 3.29 minus 1.00 is 2.29 v to the fourth for the first term. Now for the second term, negative 0 0.044 plus 0 0.100, that's gonna be positive, so I'll write plus 0 0.056 v to the third. So I've just combined those first two sets of terms with v to the fourth and v to the third. The next one would have to be the one with the v squared. So I'm doing a little bit of rearranging now because remember we want descending order or descending powers of v. So now I'll write minus 0.58 v squared. And then finally, the last term is this constant term plus 2.29. All right, let's type all that out. And I think we'll be good. Here we go. So 2.29 v to the fourth plus 0 0.056 v to the third minus 0 0.58 v squared plus 2.29. Okay, there you go. And then I do want to reassure you that number 33 is, I'm going to say just like the notes. So just like notes, last problem. <laughs> So go back and take a look at that and remind yourself how to do that one. Okay, very good. So you've now seen lesson 28 notes and we've seen some examples in homework 28. Uh, we've learned about polynomials and adding and subtracting. So good job, please, as always, um, let me know what you have questions about, what you're struggling with, and I'll be happy to help. And I'll see everybody soon in class and yeah, keep up the good work. Thank you.